In this tutorial, we are going to deal with another JavaScript problem. So the problem is to create a function that will compare two arrays and see if they have the same elements, see if they're equal to one another. This problem presents some interesting issues that we will look at. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript. As always, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe, and remember to check out the discount links to all of my courses in the description section. I really appreciate the support. And if you'd like, there are other ways to support the channel, which are linked to in the description as well. And if you're collecting script, look for the link in the description to learn and collect. Also, I've done about 200 tutorials so you can search additional tutorials by going to my website or the YouTube channel homepage. The website is linked in the description. Now at first glance, creating a function that checks two arrays to see if they're equal seems fairly straightforward. However, when you remember the nature of objects in JavaScript, an array being an object, and how they are stored, the problem becomes much more difficult. Let's first look at the issue and we'll look at a few solutions. I will also want to try something new with this tutorial and that is to give you a challenge at the end. All right, so here's a basic function that initially we may think can compare two arrays and see if they're equal. We're passing in two arrays and then it simply checks to see if they're equal to one another and we return the value. Simple as that. Down here, we're logging the results to the console. Here we call that function. We pass in two arrays. They have the exact same elements in the exact same order. So now, when we take a look at the console, we see that that equals false. We're not able to check arrays this way. And that's the, the tricky part that we run into. We think it's first going to be pretty simple, but it's not because it's tricky. And that's because of how objects are stored in variables in JavaScript. Basically what the variable is storing is a reference to a memory location where that object, that array is held. And so this will have a different reference than this. And so they're not equal to one another. The two arrays look the same, but they're two different arrays. And so the references are different and hence not equal. I know I harp on that a lot, but I think it's an important concept. So how do we go about doing this then? How can we determine if they're equal or not? Well, in some respects, this depends on what we, how we define equal. Does equal mean that they have the exact same elements in the exact same order? If that's the case, then it's not too difficult to do. We can do something like this. There's a couple approaches actually. So let me show those couple approaches. One is we can simply convert each of the arrays to a string. This is a really simple approach, which I like. And then check to see if those strings are equal to one another. Something like this. Save that and let's see what that tells us. That tells us true that they are equal. What if we make a change here? Do three and two. What do we get? Now we get false. And so that's a pretty simple solution. And there's similar ones as well. We could do something like this, return array1.join. We could simply join them with some character say a uh, comma in this case would be exactly the same as doing two string and then check to see if that is equal to the other one joined the same way. So that would work as well. Okay, so those are a couple approaches that are quite simple. Now there's also an approach using the every method of arrays. Basically what the every method does is it goes through each element in an array and it allows you to pass in a callback function. And then it, it passes in that element, each element in turn to that callback function. And then that function checks something and returns either true or false. We call that a predicate function, a function that returns either true or false. 
And what every does, what this method does, is that if each element returns a true based upon that callback function we passed in, if each element returns a true, every element returns a true, then it returns a true. If only one of them returns a false, it will return a false. Now I have another tutorial on every and some, which is a companion method, and I'll link to that for those who want more information. But I wanted to show you that solution as well, because we're going to build on that a little bit. So now we want to return the results. So I want to start with a return statement. And let's go ahead and choose the first array, dot every. And then inside of parentheses is where we pass in that function that is going to be called for every single element. Now, I'm going to use an arrow function. I'll link to a tutorial on that if you need more information. But basically, our arrow function here, this is the parameter we're going to use and this will contain the element as it goes through the array. So in the case of the first array, first time through will be this, second time through will be this, third time through and so on. So here's the arrow for the arrow function. And now what we want to do is check to see if array.2 includes that value. So we'll go through each value in the first array and we'll check to see if it's included in the second array, like that. Now that should work for us as well. But something else that this method will do that the others would not do, notice that I've now changed the arrays so that they have the same elements, but they're out of order. Is this going to return a true or not? This, in this case, it will return a true. If we did the two string or join method, it would not. Let's go ahead and refresh, and there we get a true. Now, there's still one problem with this. Look what happens if we do this kind of thing. We still get a true. And so something else I would want to do if I were using this method, and I needed to make sure and I wanted them to be equal to, as long as they had the same elements as each other, I would also check the length. And um, I would do an if statement like this. If array one dot length is not equal to array two dot length, if that's the case, then I immediately return false. I don't deal with it anymore. Otherwise, we'll do this every check. Now, with this, because those arrays are of different lengths, we get the faults correctly. So this implementation is a more detailed way of checking those arrays. That's one way we can talk about it. However, this still has a problem. What if we did something like this. Now the lengths are equal, but notice that each one of these is going to be found here as well, but the arrays are not equal. So now we get a true and we don't want to get a true. So I'm basically going to end this with a challenge. I'll come back to it in another tutorial. But I want to see what you guys come up with, what solutions you guys come up with for this particular scenario. Now, in most cases, these solutions up here are going to work great for you. So you don't need to worry about the others. But if you needed to know if they just have the same elements, how would you expand on this or how would you modify this function so that we would get the correct results with something like this being passed in? Go ahead and post your responses in the comments. It'd be neat to see what some of you come up with. And like I said, we'll revisit this in a later tutorial. All right, if you found that helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe. And remember the discount links to all of my courses in the description section. Finally, click that bell button to be notified about new releases. I try to release a new tutorial each week. And thanks for watching.